Welcome to Project Python. This is a series where I, a coding enthusiast, take on several coding challenges to challenge my coding skills and along the way explain my learnings. Each episode focuses on a different problem and that's about it. So without wasting any time, let's get into this episode of Project Python. Today's challenge is to create a function that can perform the prime factorization of any given number. The input will be a single integer and the output must be a list containing the prime factors. So for example, if we feed the function the number 630, we should expect an output of a list containing the numbers 2, 3, 3, 5 and 7 because when we multiply these numbers, we get the result 630. At this point, I would encourage you to pause the video and try solving the problem yourself. Before we start coding, let's go back and have a better look at what prime factorization is and how it can be done. Prime factorization is simply a method through which a number can be expressed as a product of prime numbers. So how do we do prime factorization? One method to do this is to take our number and divide it with the lowest prime number starting at 2. If the number is not divisible by 2, then we move on to the next lowest prime number, which is 3. We repeat this process with the results of each division until we are left with the number 1. At this point, we have completed our process of prime factorization, and all the prime numbers we found in the process form our prime factors, and thus when we multiply those numbers, we should get our original result back. For better clarity, let's try and apply this method on the number 630. So as we saw in our method, we need to try and divide 630 with the lowest prime number starting at 2. 630 is divisible by 2, so we perform the division to get the number 315. Now we try dividing 315 by 2, but find that 2 is not a factor of 315. So we move on to the next lowest prime number, which is 3. 315 is indeed divisible by 3, so we perform the division to get 105. Now we check to see if 105 is divisible by 3, and it turns out that it is. So we perform the division to get the number 35. Now 3 is no longer a factor of 35, so we move on to the next lowest prime number, which is 5. 35 is divisible by 5, and the result is 7. Now the number 7 is a prime number, so it is not divisible by 5, so we move on to the next lowest prime number, which is 7. When you divide 7 by 7, you get 1. And at this point, we have completed our process of prime factorization. All the numbers to the left form our list of prime factors. And in the function, this is what would be expected as the output. Now that we know what prime factorization is and how it can be done, we can move on to coding our solution. The first step is to define our function. And this can be done using the DEF keyword followed by the name of the function which in this case, I'm going to be calling prime underscore fact. This function takes one argument, which is our integer, and we will be calling that x. Now that we've defined our function, let's create an empty list that'll store all of our prime factors. As we saw in our method, we try dividing our number with the lowest prime number starting at two. This means that our divisor has an initial value of two. So let's create a variable called divisor and initialize it to a value of 2. For the next part of the solution, we need to create a while loop that runs as long as the value of the divisor is less than or equal to that of x. This is because as soon as the value of the divisor exceeds that of x, the process of prime factorization is complete. Each time this loop runs, we want to check if the divisor is a factor of x. Now a property of a factor of any number is that when you divide a number by its factor, the remainder is always zero. In terms of code, we can write if x modulo divisor equals to zero. The percentage sign represents the modulo operation, which returns the remainder when x is divided by the variable divisor. If we find that the divisor is indeed a factor of x, we simply want to add it to our list of prime factors. And this can be done using the append method. So to add divisor to our list of prime factors, all we would have to do is write prime underscore factors, which is the name of our list dot append divisor. Next, we need to update the value of x to be equal to x divided by divisor. 
So this takes care of the case where the divisor is a factor of x. But in the case that the divisor is not a factor of x, we simply increment the value of the divisor to the next prime number. However, we also get the correct solution if we simply increment the value of the divisor by 1. This is because if x is not divisible by 2, then we can be sure that x won't be divisible by all multiples of 2. And so this assures us that the next number we find to be a factor of x will indeed be a prime number. In terms of code, all we have to write is else divisor plus equals to 1. This is a shorthand way of saying divisor equals the divisor plus 1. We know that the while loop ends when the value of the divisor exceeds that of x, at which point the process of prime factorization has been completed, and we should find all the prime factors of x in our list prime factors. So all that's left to do is to simply return our list prime factors. To check if our code works, let's call our function and print the result to the output. Here, we will be printing the result of calling our function with x set to be equal to 630. We should expect to see an output of the list containing the numbers 2, 3, 3, 5, and 7. And this is exactly what we get on our output. This means that our code works, but we still need to test our code with a few more values for x. As you can see, the results we have got are correct. And this brings us to the end of today's challenge. The link to the file containing the solution can be found in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe for more such content. Comment below any alternative solutions you may have found or any challenges you would like me to take on in future episodes of Project Python.